I recently got an email from a friend who wanted to know how his volume control worked in his Crosley radio. Uh, this is the diagram for it. As you can see, it's a uh, All-American 5 radio. Uh, this Crosley happens to be a D25. And what I want to do is take a closer look at the audio portion of this. Of course, that ends up on the volume control. So if we take a look at the last IF, the second IF, and the 12 SQ7 circuit here, if you look to the right of that and about in the center, you see the volume control. Well, let's take out the 12 SQ7 and this capacitor C8A for a moment. And if we were to put an oscilloscope right here, uh, across the uh, secondary, this is what we would find on the oscilloscope. The blue represents the 455 kilohertz, and the red represents the audio. This is amplitude modulation, so it varies up and down. And one of the things I want to point out at this point is, notice that uh, we've got a positive half and a negative half. So if we try to use this, everything adds up to zero. Even though we got plenty of energy here, one's positive and one's negative, so the result is no signal. So let's put the 12 SQ7 back into the circuit. And what has happened is we have a diode at pin 5. And that diode has cut the signal in half. Now we're using the negative half, but doesn't matter. You can see that we still have audio. But most importantly, now, the energy does not add up to zero. We can actually use this and amplify it. But we still have that 455 kilohertz. And we don't want to amplify that. We're only after the audio. Amplifying that 455 kilohertz is a waste of energy and it can cause problems, you know, and kind of mushiness of the audio if the tube, uh, you know, tries to amplify that. The audio tube tries to amplify that. So let's add in the capacitor that we took out. And what that capacitor does is it drains off the 455 kilohertz to ground. That's what those XXX are. That's the ground symbol here. And that dot zero 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 two microfarad capacitor is small enough capacitance that the audio cannot travel through it. But the 455 kilohertz is much, much higher. It has no trouble going through that capacitor to ground. And what we're left with is just the audio signal. Now this audio signal is going to travel through the switch up and over to the high side of the volume control through capacitor uh, C2, it looks like. 
There's something in the middle, but I can't see what it is, or I can't make out what it is. Anyway, the left side of that volume control is the highest volume. And if we were to turn up the radio all the way, this is what happens. All that signal goes up to the 12SQ7 control grid where it gets amplified. And if we were to turn that volume control all the way down, you can see that now it is connected to ground and we have very little signal and more than likely no audio signal can go up to the control grid of the 12SQ7. So this is how the audio gets detected and also amplified in this All-American 5 radio. Thanks for watching.